Hi everyone, my name is Harsha Rajasimha. I am the founder CEO of Jiva Informatics Solutions. I'll talk to you a little bit about diversity, equity, inclusion in clinical research in general and the diversity, equity, inclusion aspect of clinical research. And in particular, uh, how Indo-US Rare is addressing a major gap in the space, as well as how Jiva is innovating with a technology platform to enable patients to participate in clinical research from wherever they are, irrespective of their zip code. So from a clinical uh, research and innovation standpoint, uh, there has been a significant uh, uh, focus on phase zero, phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials. Um, usually these are required phases of clinical trials before a drug device or therapy is approved for use by patients in a particular country. You know, the Food and Drug Administration, everyone would have heard of, uh, but also the European Medicine Agency and the Japanese uh, agency are the major regulatory uh, agencies that review and approve novel innovative medicines. But all, all countries have their own uh, national agencies that review uh, and approve medicines for uh, marketing in, in their respective countries as well, although they are not necessarily well equipped to approve novel medicines. They are more uh, drug repurposing and approved medicines. And so to truly uh, um, enable uh, diversity and equity, you, we want to be able to speed up the process of getting more medicines through the regulatory process. And once they are approved, they can go through phase four clinical trials as well as observational real world evidence studies, which are very critical before a interventional clinical study can be uh, started uh, for a given drug or device. Uh, this includes the patient registry, natural history study, and other uh, observational data collection studies, which help uh, the clinical researchers really understand the disease and its physiology and its, uh, how it progresses so they can better design uh, drugs and uh, therapies for, for, that, uh, for the patients affected. Um, and you know, uh, obviously the focus for today is multiple system atrophy, but um, there is also 7,000 other rare diseases uh, as well as multiple other common and complex conditions that uh, also require the same innovation and uh, clinical research. So we need to really tap into the common challenges affecting of these different rare diseases. So if you look at the process of uh, getting a new treatment approved for any given disease, typically it has to go through a uh, protocol design, the site selection, get necessary regulatory approvals in the countries where the study is to be designed and conducted, uh, configuring the study in uh, the software and databases, enrolling patients, which is often where there is a long delay, which can uh, cause uh, uh, a significant uh, uh, challenge for the sponsors of these clinical trials. And uh, assuming we are, uh, the sponsor is able to find and enroll sufficient number of patients at the clinical trial sites, the study progresses into clinical assessments, you know, collecting the uh, data related to how effective, safe, a given drug or device is uh, and routine follow-ups throughout the course of that study to uh, ensure enough evidence is generated. And patients have to be informed throughout the study about what the study, uh, how is it progressing and uh, the results of that with, uh, with respect to the patient itself. And finally, if uh, there is a intervention that has to be submitted for regulatory approvals, that can then be reviewed and either approved or uh, sent back for further research. So the whole uh, process can take uh, five to seven years once uh, it gets into phase one to get through phase two and phase three. And there are innovative trial designs which can help speed up this process uh, significantly as well. The challenge, however, is that most of these clinical trials are conducted in the United States and the European Union. As you can see in this map, uh, on the right side of my screen um, is uh, the map in red color. You know, as you can see, 
the United States and Europe are in the red uh, uh, sh uh, coloring uh, in this map. And the rest of the world uh, collectively uh, account for less than 2% of all clinical uh, trials happen in India, for example. And that's why uh, we founded the Indo-US Organization for Rare Diseases to help bridge this gap uh, between the Eastern Hemisphere and the Western Hemisphere to help engage patients with diverse backgrounds. As you can imagine, uh, patients with different genetic backgrounds, race, ethnicity, gender, age, and so on, respond very differently to each uh, uh, the same treatment. So not everyone have the same level of uh, absorption of a drug, uh, metabolism, and excretion. You know, different people re respond differently. And so it's very important to ensure that during the clinical trial process, we, uh, the sponsors and the sites are able to recruit patients from diverse backgrounds to ensure the target population will benefit and it's safe and effective for everyone involved and not just for a subsection of the uh, trial participants. And so uh, the Indo-US Organization for Rare Diseases is a membership driven organization and we are really honored to work with the Defeat MSA uh, group. Uh, and they are a member organization of Indo-US Rare Patient Alliance. Uh, the way we work with each patient group is by connecting uh, the foundation and the patients, individual patients uh, located in the United States with their counterparts and other stakeholders in the, the Indian subcontinent and vice versa. So our patient alliance includes members from USA, United Kingdom, Australia, India, and other countries. So we invite you to consider joining our patient alliance uh, if this might be of interest. Now, other programs at the Indo-US organization include the corporate alliance. Uh, we have a significant focus on education, awareness, and research programs, uh, including Letter that disseminates um, educational informational content, uh, mainly focused on our Alliance members and their priorities and making sure the patients on the other side of the continents are uh, uh, learning and informed about the progress and opportunities that uh, exist for them. And we are also uh, involved in the advocacy, uh, both at the US uh, legislative government level, as well as on the Indian side. So we are very focused on uh, the impact in terms of the various metrics. You know, we measure against the number of patient foundations, the individual patient members that are represented by our alliance, as well as the number of diseases that we cover and the number of countries that we are having an impact in. And this includes all of our uh, partners and sponsors that we like to thank. Now, the challenge, uh, however, even if we were to improve the diversity is that patients and families have a lot of burden in being able to find clinical trial. Uh, and uh, once they find a study uh, coordinating travel to get to the clinical trial site, uh, missing work or school uh, and being able to find childcare if there are siblings at home that may need uh, childcare. And, find a caregiver to go with the patient to a clinical trial site and embarking on transit and becoming informed and enrolling into a study. This is not a trivial task for either patients or for the clinical study teams. How can we help uh, reduce this burden? The key considerations in enabling access to clinical research from, for patients worldwide or even within any country is uh, to consider whether each of these activities such as informed consent can be done at patient home from the comfort of their home on a uh, internet enabled device, or do they really need to show up at a clinical trial study site uh, where they have to um, have a in-person consultation with the physician and sign a consent on paper. Similarly, there is routine uh, questionnaires uh, that the study team would allow to get responses from every patient in a study as uh, that's what enables the clinical study teams to collect patient reported outcomes 
you know, it's really important uh, now as FDA has recommended that the uh, clinical trials gather this data on how the patient is feeling uh, with a therapy or an uh, intervention is uh, it's really helping the patient and how is it helping and to what extent. And these are usually done through questionnaires or surveys, which uh, can this be done from patients at home or do they really need to come into a clinic? Can clinical assessments be done from home? You know, as you can imagine, not all of these assessments and um, data collection can be done remotely um, as some of them may require medical procedure such as a diagnostic test or imaging or other laboratory-based testing. Uh, which uh, may require, uh, which uh, may, may make the in-person travel unavoidable. But to the extent that it is uh, avoidable, um, technology can come to rescue. And so what's necessary is a technology platform that can flexibly allow uh, pa patients and study teams to conduct some of these activities either from home or from site based on patient preference and the family's uh, convenience. To do that, we uh, at Jiva developed a software as a service platform that uh, essentially enables the study teams to do screening of patients because not all patients uh, might be eligible for a given clinical trial. And it's important to screen and uh, for inclusion exclusion criteria to screen and identify the right patients uh, who match for a given clinical trial. And once there is a match, the, uh, the patients and families can review the informed consent at their own convenience on a browser-based uh, application, you know, uh, whether on a smartphone, tablet, or PC in a bring your own device fashion. And then uh, as they learn more about the study by watching videos, by reading and uh, learning about the clinical study, uh, if they wish to enroll, the patient can make the determination whether the patient feels the benefit of participating in the study is far outweighs the risks involved and the burden involved. And that's something the patient can discuss with the family as well as with the physician. And uh, if a volunteer uh, to participate in the study can sign, sign up electronically uh, from wherever they are without having to go to a uh, clinical trial site which may be located uh, in a far off country. And uh, then the study uh, teams can collect the responses to questionnaires uh, of, by creating the questionnaire using a drag and drop interface and um, have, it's very important to make sure that the patient has enough opportunity to ask questions, understand what this clinical study is all about, how their samples and data are going to be used and then make an informed decision whether to participate or not. And it cannot be a coercion, of course, uh, and hence uh, it's important to allow that uh, discretion and uh, allow the patients to make that decision uh, if they wish to enroll, and, but also have the ability to ask questions and have interactions uh, in a bi-directional manner. And then uh, if there are any lab reports that may need to be shared uh, that can be done easily, and a live interactive video conferencing communication with the study team at any time is very crucial. So uh, enabling all of these modules in a, uh, uh, in a single login without requiring, uh, you know, one to use a different email system, uh, SMS system, and a video conferencing system, all of these can be done from a single login. That's very important. And uh, from their own device, without requiring that everyone have to use a specific type of a uh, brand or a model of a device. If it, this can be used on any um, uh, browser enabled device that can be very, very um, uh, helpful in increasing participation and uh, equity and diversity and inclusion as well. So uh, before um, we conclude and uh, allow opportunity for any questions, I would like to uh, walk you through quickly on how you can find and enroll uh, a clinical study. You know, it's very important to note that, uh, you know, uh, in, for most uh, rare diseases, the number of clinical trials uh, that's going on is really encouraging right now. 
95% of the rare diseases do not have any approved uh, therapies. Uh, and so the best option and hope for most patients is to enroll in a clinical trial that they qualify for after discussing with their physician so that it's better than the standard of care by definition. You know, if you are uh, matching for a clinical trial, um, you, you should strongly consider the possibility of enrolling in, in a uh, study um, because by definition, these are not approved by the FDA unless it shows significant promise compared to the current standard of care, uh, especially for those who meet the inclusion exclusion criteria. And so you should definitely uh, give this uh, enough consideration before uh, enrolling or declining one. But the key challenge is how do you identify a clinical trial? Oftentimes, people living, especially outside of the United States and Europe, do, are not aware that they can gain free treatment access to a potentially life-saving or significantly uh, helpful therapy at no cost to them during the course of a clinical trial, especially if it's a gene therapy, which are a one-time treatment, it can be curative. You know, it can help you for 10, 15, 20 years uh, if it works, right? So uh, it, it, it can offer significant opportunity to improve your quality of life. So the way you, you can find a clinical trial is you go to this website, clinicaltrials.gov on any browser. And from the browser, you can uh, search for a condition, uh, in this case, multiple system atrophy that I'm typing here. And uh, then when I click on search, um, you can then see uh, all the clinical trials for multiple system atrophy, which currently there are 133 studies. Now, if I apply the filters, uh, recruiting, enrolling, active um, and uh, not yet recruiting um, and apply, that 133 comes down to 63 studies. Now, if you are an adult between the age of 18 and 64, you can apply that extra filter here. And you can also uh, say apply. Now it's still 63, which means almost all the uh, uh, MSA clinical trials are adult. And if you like to see on a global map where these clinical trials are ongoing, you will see that 34 trials in the United States, 21 in the European Union, nine in China, and, and a couple here and there, you know, in Canada, Middle East, uh, Russia, and Australia. So you can now decide um, based on where you are located, uh, which, uh, which of these might be of uh, um, easy access to you. And then uh, you can now reach out to uh, click on that specific clinical trial and look at specific uh, location where this particular clinical study uh, uh, can be accessed at a trial site. And you can reach out to the contact information that is provided at the, usually at the bottom of this uh, here, you know, uh, in this case in France, um, here is the email address and phone number. So I strongly encourage you to uh, review uh, these clinical trials uh, and identify those that might help you. And um, so with that, I conclude my talk um, saying uh, thank you for this opportunity and I uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, for any questions. Here is my email address and phone number. I uh, invite you to consider uh, communicating with the Indo-US Organization for Rare Diseases. Uh, they are here to help you connect with uh, resources on a global scale, as well as with Jiva, if you are considering any uh, clinical research study that we can help with our technology platform. Thank you very much for listening and happy to take any questions.